When I die, Westside Barbell will die. There's no one can take the club over. They don't have the attitude that I've got. And um, so that's just when I die, the, West, the club will die. So, but I'm not planning on dying just yet. Yo, so I come into this having, you know, this much knowledge on a particular individual. And there are people out there with this much knowledge on this particular individual. But I do understand that I am gathering a little bit of steam here and that there are some people who follow me who don't really have as broad of a view on things that I do. And I think that I can do a little bit of justice to bring up Louis Simmons and his recent passing. Louis Simmons is the fucking man, okay? Like, he's just the best freaking dude to ever walk the planet. I'm 63, I pulled 675 deadlift at 217 and squatted 730 and bench 510. What side is my life? <laughs> if you ever wanted to think about a badass motherfucker, you think about Louis Simmons. When the dude was 74 years old, somebody who was having heart attacks in his 50s, he'd have a heart attack and he'd be back in the gym that night working out. Some of you watching this will go, what was wrong with the guy? What I think is that he's fucking badass. Now, without the context, you might think that he's weird, but when you know the things that I know about him, it ends up being really cool. He had an atmosphere. He would always say that he was the method he created, which was West Side Barbell, the gym, and the conjugate method. I want world records. You know, I want to dominate this board like no one ever has. Uh, I was just elected into the Hall of Fame, Powerlifting Hall of Fame, York Barbell, and I turned it down. And people's asking why I turned it down because I'm not done. The conjugate method is something that a lot of you watching may not even know that you utilize that came from Louis Simmons. You probably use pieces of equipment of his that you don't even realize that you use, that being the reverse hyper. I mean, I freaking got one right over there. You know why he did that? Because he freaking blew out his lower back, his lumbar spine, and he had to come up with his own method on how to rehabilitate his back. So a lot of his methods and pieces of equipment that he created himself came from the fact that he was so badass, he would do things like work out, after having a heart attack and being hospitalized, he had to work out so he would create something to rehab his back because there wasn't anything out there that would allow people like him to work out or load his body in a way where it was open chain, which the reverse hyper was, and still add a bunch of weight and keep himself from shrinking when he probably wouldn't be able to load up his body the typical way, like throwing weights on her back or holding onto a deadlift bar. He's the guy who's like really started to be big with bands and chains and the dynamic method. He had speed days and max effort days and upper body, lower body, loaded every other day. He's got the formula. I think the thing with, with Louis that has made him special, he is the guy who brought a lot of the uh, Russian and Eastern Bloc training philosophies to the U.S. And a lot of these things are being followed by strength coaches um, in the in the industry in general. He, he has had NFL coaches stop in the gym and kind of try to poke around and find out about his methods and, and apply that to things like football. Worked with, uh, you know, indirectly with the Patriots, the Green Bay Packers, the Seattle Seahawks, and the Cleveland Browns a lot. He was really big on the box squat. He was really big on wide stance squats and narrow squats and squatting in different positions so that you could give the body different stimuluses. He had a bunch of us freaking CrossFitters over into his gym. Like, I remember Sam Briggs, there was a video of her over at Westside at one point when she was trying to get stronger, right around the time where she had won the games and then realized strength was a weakness. So what do you do? You go to the strongest freaking dude on the planet and all of the strongest freaking people and you hang out with Louis Simmons. And this just wasn't Sam Briggs. The strongest people on the planet realized that the benefit to work out with Louie was just unsurmountable. Like there's nobody else who's gonna have as big of a benefit to work with as it was with Louis Simmons. I watched a couple of documentaries on him. This is all just off the top of my head, but I remember that people who worked out there worked out for free. He wouldn't charge them. And it's because if you were dedicated enough to do the things that he was asking you to do, he didn't want you to pay. He just wanted to understand that you were bought into his system. And these people would buy in because there was like the West Side versus the World documentary. And there was this massive dude and he would like kick him to the curb and say, get the fuck out of here. Very cool documentaries. And I definitely recommend that you go and watch it now it is sad that his passing is what brought up the fact that maybe you should go pay attention to who this dude was but one of his biggest quotes and something that i had seen was about how when he passes west side is going to be done like he is west side and i understand that when i die west side barber will die there's no one can take the club over they don't have the attitude that i've got and um so that's just when i die it was the club will die so but i'm not planning on dying just yet
But I think that he's so big and such a movement, and I do believe that there's going to be other people like me talking about him in this way, where he doesn't really understand the impact that he had on the world by creating things like the Reverse Hyper that is now a piece of equipment sold on Rogue Fitness. And I know people who have been over in freaking California who were at his freaking gym, and to this day will say that that was the strongest they'd ever been. And when you have these people, you become a myth. A legend, myth mythology, transcend death. And Louis Simmons is going to be that person who just transcends all of this stuff. He's going to be around forever. And him saying stuff like that, he definitely probably meant that when he dies, Westside dies. He was in it to the very end, working out with his people. He was 74 years old, and he probably still had a 700-pound back squat as a 74-year-old. And people are going to look at him and go, what's wrong with this dude? It was, do, do you really care? Does it even matter? It doesn't matter what you think! Like, if you look at somebody who's that into it and that passionate about something, and you're going to say something negative about this type of person, like, go the fuck away. Like, what's wrong with you? I think it's just super freaking cool that he's at that age, that passionate, still doing it. People are still coming to him because they realize how beneficial everything that he's doing is, and it's extremely sad that he passed. Honestly, I thought he'd be 100 years old at some point, still bench pressing 400 pounds. And it would be, bring even more validity to the West Side and Conjugate Method. On my channel, I do talk about performance-enhancing drugs, and Louis Simmons was like, drugs are only illegal in the United States. They're not illegal to use in competition, so it's illegal to get caught with them. And he was a big advocate of it. And I do believe that in the West Side versus the World documentary, it was made pretty clear that in order to work with him, you had to be using them. Now, that also doesn't make him a bad person. It's just like A equals B. If everyone's using the crap, like why would you put yourself at a disadvantage and not use the crap? It's something that I can't egregiously say is happening in our community of CrossFit. When there are people like Louis Simmons out there who say that you need to do this in order to win, it makes it very hard to think that like the sport where recovery and fitness and training and all of that doesn't have some sort of rough correlation between the two. Yeah, you can always say we are a younger sport, and because of that, it hasn't come to that point yet, but I do think that that's a little bit of a naive statement. But I don't want to make this all about this. I want to make this about Louis Simmons and talking about him and bringing light to the situation, which is that he's past and it's sad that he deserves to be remembered as probably one of the strongest and badass motherfuckers of all time. So I do recommend that you, after watching this, which I intend on making pretty short, go on the YouTube and click on like Louis Simmons and check out some West Side documentary, like West Side versus the World may have even been a Netflix documentary. It was pretty cool how they had like the West Side people and team against the very other local team. And there was of course like the melodrama back and forth, but it just happened to be with these 400 pound fucking freaks who are all squatting a 1,000 pounds, and that's something I haven't brought up yet. I think Louis Simmons has produced the most 1,000-pound squatters in history, and there was a female who was like a 900-pound squatter, something crazy like that. So why wouldn't people like Sam Briggs want to go work with this guy if this type of stuff is happening? So every time that you go and enjoy that reverse hyper, remember where it came from. Throw bands on the bar. Remember where it came from. It's not just some CrossFit thing where it's like, oh, the coach is so smart. If it weren't for Louis Simmons... You wouldn't be really using the bands, the chains. You wouldn't have the dynamic method. You wouldn't have speed days. The freaking Packers and the Patriots wouldn't be as good as they were without Louis Simmons, without getting any of the recognition for this stuff. Again, I'm just here trying to bring light to this stuff so that you know what it is you're doing so you can go ahead and tell other people what they're doing. Knowledge is power, yeah? Andrew Hiller, bye. The fact that the Arnold Classic is here, bringing in bodybuilding and fitness, uh, it's kind of made Central Ohio uh, a place where strength is just respected. As far as powerlifting and, and strength sports, a lot of it has to do with Louis Simmons and his West Side Barbell being in Columbus, Ohio. There's not a powerlifter on the planet that doesn't know the name West Side Barbell. You know, it got kind of violent in there. I kept... You're not going to come in there and take from that place and not give anything. You want to die to do this? You shouldn't do this. I don't know, but you all got stronger. You come up with something new and crazy and different. You don't train Westside till you're in Westside. And after Westside, they'll never be a Westside.